Sorry, what? Oh, yes. Well, okay. Amber's here. You know, when I look at Amber, I see almost like one of my daughters, honestly. And uh, <clears throat> I guess since she's had... She, <clears throat> Since she's had children, um, she used to call me Papa, but now since she's had children, it's like, okay, we've got another one working over here. <laughs> Amber, it's good to have you here always, always. All right, well, let's begin then. Psalm uh, 84. <clears throat> Amen. I mean, you really can't go wrong in the Psalms unless so. Uh, it's like Psalm 22 or something, you know. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken? <laughs> Psalm 84. And um, I'm reading from the King James. <coughs> oh, by the way, just a quick note as we're going here. One other reason why I did a song, a special this morning, is because we have so many talented people in this church, and I really miss having special son, Scott and Jennifer and others that can sing. <clears throat> just, you know, and you have to be led of the Lord, but I just miss those specials, you know. Someone singing something from the Lord just where we're not joining in, but we're just, you know, being washed. So, as the Lord leads. All right, Psalm 84, King James says, this is verse 1 and 2. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. <clears throat> All right. This is, um, I, I've, I've tried to find different references to this that would help me <clears throat> uh, be assured that the word tabernacles in the King James is plural. <clears throat> and, um, and I think it is for several reasons. Number one, because they translated it that first off. And second, it is a reference to the Lord of hosts. And the Lord of hosts is the Lord of the, the group, not as a whole, but all the individuals in the group, you know. <clears throat> and so uh, if, if this is not plural <clears throat> and singular, it's still true. Singular means, um, in the way that I'm using it, is the body of Christ, because the body of Christ, the church, is one. And so he would just speak to the one. <clears throat> but I think he's speaking to us as individuals, because we are the temple of the Lord. All of us are individually are that, and we together are the temple of the Lord. And so I know that this applies. Also, the word tabernacles comes from, of course, the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was the dwelling place, the dwelling place of God. And so if he's saying, how lovely are the, are thy, are the tabernacle, thy tabernacles, he's talking about all of his dwelling places. He's talking about us um, being earthen vessels. For you have this treasure. Thank you, brother. These people are just smooth. I don't know. I, I wish my preaching was half as smooth as the little things that, that happen around here. <clears throat> All right. So, um, uh, and the word amiable means how lovely, how lovely. So I <clears throat> made just a little translation. How lovely are thy dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. <clears throat> my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth to become the courts of the Lord. And we know that in the New Testament, that that's it. We're the temple of God. And our soul, yeah. <clears throat> maybe I should try drinking some of this. I actually tried to do something this morning so you wouldn't have to suffer, suffer this man. <clears throat> I had the leftovers of this from singing, or no, from two weeks ago when I put it up. <laughs> Just before I sang, I set that down. Oh my God. 
<laughs> We're never going to get to anything spiritual today, are we? <clears throat> All right. Again, the translation. How lovely are thy dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth to become the courts of the Lord. <clears throat> and so, you know, the scripture says we have this treasure in earthen vessel. And we know that the, the, the truer thing for us in the new covenant, even if he was referring to a building back then or buildings, even if he was referring to him getting to walk into those courts, if that be the case, we know that our heart's desire and Paul's heart's desire is that Christ live in us, that Christ be our life, that he <clears throat> be able to walk the courts of his temple and feel at home and stroll through at any part of the temple <clears throat> and live. And that's, that's, the, that's always the thing. It's, you know, I think that sometimes we fear that, um, what does that scripture say in Hebrews? It says, um, the word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, able to divide asunder soul from spirits and joint from the marrow. And... <clears throat> You know, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And we go, oh, oh no, you know, the, the word is going to slice through and it's going gonna, it's gonna to discern my thoughts and intents. And, you know, we're kind of like, don't look. Or, you know, we think we can hide or whatever. <clears throat> but it's not that. The heart that we need discerned is the heart of the Lord, not your heart. <laughs> and the word is there to open the heart of God to us. <clears throat> okay. And the answer isn't Jesus inside of us so that he can walk around and pick out what's wrong. Okay? That's not, a, that's not his goal. That's not the way he is. He's not in there so that he's going, you know, you know Randy, you've got this dark room over here. <clears throat> no, he just wants to fill all things. And that's what the scriptures say, that he might fill all things. Now, he is light, and he's the light of life, so that will chase off the darkness. Amen. It'll accomplish the same thing, but in a different way, not legally, not, not to expose us, not to beat us to death, not to, you know what I mean, you know, the, the fears that we go through when we're afraid that the Lord's going to deal with us or something. <laughs> and <clears throat> the way the Lord deals with us is by being revealed in us. How lovely are thy dwelling places because he can stroll through the courts. He can, he can just be at home. In us, you know. <clears throat> you know, it'd be like us renting him a <laughs> us renting him an apartment and uh and we say, Okay, now there's two rooms that are locked and I don't want you going in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> um he's not thinking, What the heck's behind those walls? What what evils lurk back there? He's going, Look, this is my house. It's not about what evils lurk, you know. I mean, first of all, he may come in there and you may have the best furniture in the world and he'll throw it out. Because <clears throat> he's not comfortable with it. And you go, well, this is expensive leather. And he goes, well, you know, I don't like it. We're meant to be the temple of the Lord. We were born again for it. We we're born again for, and we're born again for Jesus, and we're born again for his life and to love him. And, uh, you know, you got you to gotta love the wording of these scriptures. Um, verse 2, you know, talking about how <clears throat> I long, um, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the, of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. <clears throat> and... And I believe that the longing here is that, that he be, you know, the, the specific longing here is a longing to be formed more as the courts of the Lord, where the Lord can really just have free course. Or let's put it this way, <clears throat> where the Lord can just live. Where the Lord can just live. Now, I don't know what that means. I mean, ultimately, I don't. I can tell you, <clears throat> I can identify some of the ways of the Lord, <clears throat> but the key isn't to, isn't to figure out the, the things that the Lord wants to do, you know, like put a ping pong table in there or something, you know, it's not to figure those things out, it's to let him live. If he wants a ping pong table, he'll bring one in. 
You know what I mean? He'll, he knows how to take care of what, he's, what he desires. And we may understand some of his desires, but we don't understand all of his desires. And we will sometimes miss God, not because we did evil, but because we're trying so hard to please him. Instead of trying so hard just to let Jesus live. Um, <clears throat> and that, that whole thing with Solomon, the, you know, I had a similar situation to that at Berean when Berean was going on. <clears throat> and with Solomon, the situation wasn't that Solomon got off from the Lord or left the Lord in the purest sense. The, the problem there was that he didn't get the pattern from the Lord like David did. He heard it from David, or he was shown the pattern in some sort of drawn form, but David saw it exactly from the Lord. And it's a, it was an issue between Solomon and God, not an issue between, you know, all the other things that we think, you know, all the other angles that we come from. <clears throat> and, in this, and in this case that we're talking about here in, in Psalm 84, you know, the first commandment, to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and your soul and your strength and might, you know, and, and to love your neighbors yourself, but to first, to love the Lord. <clears throat> um, what greater privilege? I mean, I don't know about you guys. When I got drawn to the Lord, I got, I, I got drawn by his love. The fact that he would die for me, you know, the fact that he would take somebody in like me, honestly, would amaze me, still amazes me, and still brings me to tears. You may call it simple sa salvation. I call it I met Jesus. And, and I still, I'm still meeting him, if you will. I'm still knowing him. Kenose, I'm still knowing him, you know. <clears throat> um, so uh, he says, my soul longeth. And that's a, that's a pretty big deal. When your soul and your flesh cry out for the living God, your soul and your flesh. Okay, <clears throat> it's understandable if your spirit, like if you're in a church service just like this, and you're sitting there and you're, you know, the, Scott led some great worship and everything, and during that worship you're going, oh, I just, you know, I love you, Lord, and, <clears throat> and something's happening on the inside. I want to go for the Lord. Let's just say, you know, that. I just want to go. I want to be sold out to Jesus. Well, in your spirit, Christ dwells in your spirit. Did you realize that? That's where he dwells. I mean, that he's in your spirit. <clears throat> and the responses of your spirit really are him living there. But your responses of your soul, folks, he doesn't dwell in your soul. Your soul belongs to you. So if your soul's responding, oh my goodness, you have slipped past just the fact that, well, it has to be Jesus or nothing. Well, yeah, it's true, but Jesus, you know, that scripture says it in uh, Thessalonians, I think it's 1 Thessalonians 5, and he says that he may sanctify you wholly and yeah. sanctify is to set you apart unto him. I want to set you apart unto me. It's like, it's like the vessels of the temple, like the table of showbread, you know, and they had plates and they had cups and stuff like that. And so these were holy vessels mainly to eat the bread of life. They didn't take them home and eat pizza or, you know, something like that with it. You know what I mean? And go, you know, hey, how about some goat's milk? You know, let's drink that. That's good. <clears throat> They, those vessels were separated unto the Lord and unto his use. That's, that's the deal. That's the deal. Well, for him to sanctify you wholly, and that word is not H-O-L-Y there. It's W-H-O-L-Y. That means completely. But he describes what that completion is. That completion is that you never sin and that you never do anything wrong or ever have a bad thought again or anything like that. That's what I want. That. That's what religion teaches you, but that's not what the Word of God teaches you. The Word of God teaches you that you be sanctified, holy, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, your soul is your soul, and your soul's going to react, and your soul's going to do stuff, but keep it under him. 
And when you find your soul truly lining up with your spirit, it's an incredible thing. I mean, I always think of, of Mary, the mother of Jesus, before she had Jesus. And, and uh, you know, she hears the news that she's going to bring forth Christ, not just be saved. She's going to bring forth Christ. And she, she sings, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Savior. And I think her body's probably lined up too. I, I don't think she's just kind of going, my soul will magnify the Lord, and my spirit exalts the Lord. You know, it's like, my, my soul. I'm still chewing on this. My soul. <clears throat> Like I said somewhere, you know, lifting holy hands. <clears throat> you can always tell when, when somebody's dead because their flags are flying at half mast. You know, it's like, I, just, you know. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know where I get this stuff. <clears throat> um, all right. <clears throat> but when here's the problem. Here's the problem. When your soul starts lining up, there's going to be trouble on the bridge, you know what I mean? There's going to be trouble <clears throat> because when your soul starts wanting the Lord, there's going to be an eviction in the house. You've been dwelling in there, you know what I mean? But you're about to be evicted by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, <laughs> you know, because he's, you know, he's coming. And we're, we'll get into those scriptures pretty soon here, but <clears throat> he's coming. And he's going to... Um, Fill up the house. And, and you, you have those pictures. The perfect example is, again, Solomon. Solomon, when they, they dedicated the temple. Okay, most of us know <clears throat> that, you know, the, a little bit of that story. The story is, is that he's dedicating the temple, and then the glory of the Lord fell, and all of the priests fell on their face, and they could not minister by reason of the glory of God. you remember that? <clears throat> and I've heard so many different examples of that. You know, well, it's because they were worshiping, and the worship brought the glory of God, or this or that. It plainly says, <clears throat> it plainly says what it was. It says, when the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the Lord himself, when the Ark of the Covenant came in and was brought in and given its place, that's the wording it says, given his place, <clears throat> the glory cloud filled the thing and everybody else went down and couldn't do anything because he's in there now. <clears throat> Some of you may not realize it when your spirit and soul line up. You know, oh, I feel so good. And the Lord's saying, little do you know that this is an eviction notice. Right. <clears throat> it's the sweetest eviction notice you'll ever get. <laughs> and he didn't say be out in two weeks. He's ready. You know what I mean? <clears throat> He's ready to come, you know, and, and fill that temple. <clears throat> so um, there is this movement that's happening in Psalms 84 that's really a glorious movement. <clears throat> Let me give you another, uh, an added picture, and we'll give several more of these. But let's look over in Isaiah 54, book of Isaiah. And Isaiah 54, verse 1 and 2 and 3. <clears throat> verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou who didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou who didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. <clears throat> For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the nations, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. 
Um, Look at uh, chapter 53, verse 10. I'm, I'm looking for a specific scripture here, and I think I found it. <clears throat> Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Um, <clears throat> actually, that's with, that's with another one. Uh, let me find it. Verse... Uh, Verse 8, added with that. He was taken from prison, from judgment or justice, and who, here, here, listen to this, who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. Okay, <clears throat> when I was in Ireland, I was sharing along these lines, not, well, I was sharing along these lines, <clears throat> and I was dealing with uh, uh, Abigail, um, in the Old Testament. <clears throat> and I likened her situation, and I won't go into all that, but I, to, I likened her situation to the uh, Ethiopian eunuch. And the Ethiopian eunuch, <clears throat> um, he, was, uh, he had a chariot, and he was a big man in the, the realm, but he wasn't that big because somebody was over him, and he was castrated and he was he was probably a black man so he had he was you know didn't have all the rights everyone else had Ethiopian <clears throat> and so he's so he's sitting there and he's come up to Jerusalem to worship he's looking for some spiritual answers and he's Ethiopian and he's a eunuch he's looking for spiritual answers and so when the feast is over he's pulled his chariot over beside you know, this place where there was some water and he's got the Bible and he stops at this place where uh, Isaiah 53 and all this bad stuff that happened to Jesus and he's wondering, <clears throat> you know, you know, who is this guy? Is this someone else or who is this? <clears throat> Big question. Who is this? And he wants to know because what he's reading is like his situation. He's cut off. His generate. There is not going to be one in his generation. He's cut off, and Jesus was cut off. And who shall declare his generation? And who, you know, and his seed is cut off from the earth. <clears throat> okay, that's Isaiah 53. But Isaiah 54 is a continuation of Isaiah 53, but is the resurrection version. And Isaiah 54, the barren there is not you, but Christ, the barren of Isaiah 53. The one that's barren, barren all the way through. He's lost his rights. He's lost his ability to give seed. If he's dead, that's it. You, you following? I mean, most of us read this and we go, oh, I'm going to sing. <laughs> I want to sing. Anyway. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> oh, barren. But, <laughs> but it's not talking about us. It's talking about Jesus. And him being cut off, and then, but there's a this wonderful part um, <clears throat> that the way that it taught, like verse three, for thou shalt break forth on the right hand, folks. That's not him breaking forth like this. Whoopee! This is breaking forth with children or seed. Check the context. It's that's the context. Okay, and so. On the left and on the right, and inherit the nations and make the desolate cities to be filled. And of course, in verse 2, enlarge the place of thy tent. There, you know, you're growing as the, the <laughs> you're growing as the tabernacle of God, almost said as the teepee of God. <laughs> Sorry. I'm Texan. All right. Yeah, it is. Um, but it's enlarging, and if we're that temple, then we're being, we need to be enlarged for him. Give him more place. That's all it means. It doesn't mean you're going to get fat. <clears throat> Are you okay with that? Okay. You're going to, you're just, all it means is you're given more place for his seed, for his reality, for the fullness of him that will bring forth to the nations, on and on and on and on. <clears throat> all right, so that, 
you have to realize that this is, you know, uh, uh, let's see. So he's, he's, he's talking about enlarging the tent. He's talking about enlarging the temple. He's talking about enlarging the tabernacle that's there. So the barren one now in, in chapter 54 is being exalted. It's the resurrection side of the death side of Isaiah 53. He's being exalted and the lamb is going to be seen as exalted. Okay, The king of glory. The highest glory, king of glory, the highest glory that can be given for the one who went to the lowest depths for us. <clears throat> so he's being, he is being exalted to a throne, and that's usually all we see from, from this, that Jesus was exalted to a throne, but he's also exalted in a temple. A temple, we're the temple of God. See, the king doesn't just go to a throne sitting out in the desert. Well, I'm king out here. You know, there's usually a temple that goes along with that, you know. And we somehow we miss that a lot. We go, oh, I'm going to go to the throne of grace, but you know, we're supposed to be the temple. There's, it's all explainable, but uh, we can't do it all right now. <clears throat> so, so the temple is his habitation. I mean, he is exalted, but it's lamb exalted. It's Isaiah 53 lamb that got raised and got raised into the temple. Us. Lamb. Okay. Now, here's a wonderful scripture. Uh, back in Psalms, Psalm 24. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, Psalm 24 or 24, whatever you, whatever you need. <clears throat> And first verse 3, Psalm 24, verse 3, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord, or who shall stand in the holy place? Okay, so now uh, look at verse 7. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Verse 8, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Verse 10, who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. That sound familiar? That's what we were reading in Psalm 84 when it says, How lovely are thy dwelling places, O Lord of hosts. So verse 10, who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. Selah. All right. So the only proper response for the, for the temple, for his tabernacle, for his dwelling places, is to open wide the, go the gates. To open wide the gates and let the king of glory come in. <clears throat> And uh, notice in the scripture, it's not talking about letting the Savior in. This is not, this is people that already know the Lord, okay? This is long past having let the Savior in. Let's just say it. A lot of Christians open wide their gates and let the Savior come in and then shut them and then they live. <clears throat> okay? And, and, um, and someone would, might ask me, they might say, well, well, Brother Randy, are they saved? Yeah, they're saved. You're saved by grace. But they've missed the eternal plan. They've missed God's heart plan, not our benefit plan. They got that. I got the benefit plan, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like signing up for insurance. Well, I got the benefits, you know. And that's the whole deal. I, I just want the best benefits I can get. 
but there comes a time, or there can come the time, there can come the time that to as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. <clears throat> so there is, um, there is this uh, question that's going on here. Um, and the question that's going on here in these verses, and it repeats it uh, several times here, <clears throat> the question isn't if we will let right. him in. The question isn't if it, we're going to let him in. The question is, verse 8, who is? Who is the king of glory? The question is, verse 10, who is this king of glory? <clears throat> so it's important, if you, if you go by this, it's important that you not just let the king of glory in because you're just letting somebody in with a big title and you're going, well, I, he's got a big title. I need to let him in. He's Jesus. He's the, uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we, you know, so you know, we're bowing to somebody because we see a crown or we see this or we see that. Well, Jesus came to this earth intentionally not looking like God, not in the form of God, but in the form of man and then a servant and then a criminal to see if we would see past the external and see the king of glory, see the lamb already there before he's exalted. And he always responded to people that seemed to see the inward thing. And he'd go, hey, you know, there will be a memorial to you from, you know, da-da-da-da, because he's preparing for burial. He sees death in this reality, and he sees the reality that's, that is him, not just what he's going to do. And, and, you know, let me make it clear. We need to embrace our salvation. We need to, you know, all the benefits. Uh, the, the scripture even says, forget not thy benefits. All right. So we're not talking about dumping part of Jesus, or at least what Jesus. We're not talking about dumping what Jesus did just to get Jesus. But we are talking about changing our emphasis. Amen? Salud. All right. So now here's the question. <clears throat> Who is this king of glory? It's the lamb. It's the slaughtered lamb. It is. I mean, the, where do you get that from? Well, check the one on the throne in the book of Revelation. He's the exalted one. He's the glorified one. Yeah, that's right. Well, don't hear that. Look, you know, you know, Lindsay said he's a lot in referring to uh, um, Revelation 5. You know, somebody says, you know, everybody's weeping in heaven. You know, we go, there's no more tears in heaven. They're weeping because they can't open the seals. And, and they say, well, you know, who shall open the seals? Who, who? And somebody says, oh, don't weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah hath prevailed, and he can open them. And then the scripture says that they did a most important thing. They turned to see a lamb, a slaughtered lamb, a little lamb, too. It's the... the the Greek there is very specific. A very small slaughtered lamb sitting on the throne reigning. Okay. So what is the power that the, that the scriptures are talking about here? The Lord mighty in power. Where is that one? Um, uh, is it? Uh, verse 8, yes, thank you. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. All right. Again, the picture I always get, and you've, some of you have heard me give this picture, but when I was teaching the book of Revelation class, this was the picture I got. But we see, you know, we see the Antichrist, we see the beast, we see the, all the different, you know, creatures and all this on one side of the valley ready to charge, and they're, ah! You know, anybody see the Lord of the Rings and all those people and what they look like? 
bang, slimy, and they're ready to attack and everything. And so they come, go, yeah, and all of this horde comes running down the side of this mountain. And on the side of the mountain over there where they're going to meet in the valley in between, there's this little lamb going, bah, 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 you know, trotting out to meet these vast hordes that have all this weaponry and everything. All right, who's going to win? Okay, well, see, there's several ways of looking at it because, he, let's face it, he's going to get slaughtered. And he did. It's called the cross. <laughs> he knew what was going He didn't, he, he wasn't going, you know, you know, soon as I'm just about there, a big horn's going to come out of my head and it's going to go, <laughs> and all die. No, that's the way we write stories. Some of you are listening going, oh, I wouldn't have thought of that. But anyway, <clears throat> okay, that's the way I write stories. But he, he, Jesus knows going in when he's coming up against these forces that the power of God is not found in manipulation and force and pressing your way and, and, and t twisting things so that things fall the way that you think. That's not the way it works in the kingdom of God. It works by laying down your life. And he knew that this would be the victory, that his death would be the victory. He counted the cost and he tells us to count the cost. You know? So the question again, who is this king of glory? Oh my God, it's this little slain lamb. It's... Isaiah 53, lamb. Then that's why Isaiah 54 says, Rejoice, O barren. It's changed chapters now. We've gone from death chapter to resurrection. Rejoice, O barren. Be glad you didn't use your weapons and you didn't use your powers and you didn't use this and you didn't do that. That what God ordered would Come to pass because you're with him. Who shall declare thy generation? And that Ethiopian eunuch is saying, Who is this? That was his question too. Who is this? Who is this person? Because I have been robbed of my rights and I have been robbed of being able to bring forth seed and I have... And Philip, right there in that place, it says, right there in Isaiah 53, he shared Christ with him. That's what it says. It says that. He shared Christ. He didn't share the gospel as we understand. He didn't share the sal a message of salvation. This guy wasn't looking for a message of salvation from hell at that time. He was looking for something right now. And he heard and when he got done, he said, you know, there's, here's water. I'm ready to be baptized. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's get this thing on. I'm for it. I've never heard anybody like this. Egypt never, never was that way. Egypt was never that way. I say never. I'm not talking about, can't even think of his name right now. But, you know, they were always a mighty power in the earth, Egypt. And is, uh, Israel, many a times when they got in trouble, said, let's, let's get Egypt to help us. And God said, you're looking to the arm of the flesh. You're working it. You're doing this. You're trying to figure this out. You're trying to make sure that this can, you know, all those kind of things. And that's just us. That's, that's understandable. I mean, it's us. I'm not, and let me, let me just tell you a little thing about me. When I say stuff like that, I'm not minimizing flesh or sin or, or us. I'm not minimizing that. I'm just saying, until it's Christ, that's us. So our, that's why our number one pursuit needs to be Christ. But the very beginning ways of the Lord is to understand who it is that has come into us. Who is it that we opened up? Not just, 
And, it, and again, book of Revelation could have just sat a guy up there with a beard and long hair and robe and sandals. And we go, oh, there's the king of glory, right? Book of Revelation could have just done that. It never did that. It never said, it hardly even uses the name Jesus, but it uses the lamb 20 some odd times. We would have said, this fits with me with that guy with the robe on and stuff there. There he is, yeah. That's the king of glory. Do you realize that in, unless you're looking at the guy that went to the cross, if you're thinking of the guy that got resurrected alone, that God's justifying him because he was really right and they were wrong, that's not the true principle. It's not. So he puts a lamb, a slaughtered lamb up there, and he says, this is my power. This is my authority. This is my glory. This is the king of glory. Let him come in to you. Open wide your gates and your everlasting doors. Let the king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? Um, turn with me, if you would, to John chapter 14. <clears throat> And this will be my first ending. <clears throat> Which, you know, we're on the back side of the sharing here. John 14, <clears throat> verse 6. Um, this is Jesus speaking. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. <clears throat> All right. Anybody, show of hands, anybody ever heard that scripture? If you've never read it, heard it at least. Okay, good, good, good. <clears throat> You were scaring me there for a minute, honest. <laughs> it was like, really? It's like, I'm, I'm too tired to raise my hand. I'm just teasing you. <laughs> Who's ever read this scripture? Where's the, yes! I love the word of God. Sorry. <laughs> well, that would be a little too much. And Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Well, <clears throat> there's this whole misunderstanding going on here um, of where Jesus is going and what this whole situation. And, and uh, Thomas is wanting to, you know, know the way, you know. Uh, Jesus said, where I go and the way, the way you know. And Thomas going, you know, da-da-da-da, no man come to the Father. And then verse 8, Philip chimes in because verse 5 is Thomas talking in verse 8 Philip saith unto him Lord showeth the father and it suffices us and Jesus Jesus is all wrapped up in this reality that he, he's already made the statement of verse 6 and they're all confused about what's going on where what's the way and 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 we want to see the father and they don't realize that everything is wrapped up in Christ He's going to say, look, you're looking for the way and you want to get to the Father. I am the way and if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I am the fullness of all that God wanted set forth. Know me. Know me. <clears throat> all right. And, and that's clear from these scriptures. That's, there's clearly an issue in the minds of disciples that there is a great variety of subjects and of entities and of realities and that we are on a journey to learn the billions and billions of truths set forth in the Bible. No. That, the disciples are thinking that way because they're going, well, what, you know, what is the way? We, and Jesus said, the way I go, and, you know, 
the way I go, and da da da. And they go, well, what? Well, what is that way? We don't know it. He's going, hello. <laughs> You know, I am the way, you know, I am the truth, I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And they go, they don't, they don't get I am the way, they don't get I am the truth, they don't get I am the life, they don't get, no man can get there except by me. They just hang on the word Father. Everything but Jesus. Everything but Jesus. Well, who is a father? How do we get to the father? How are we going to know the father? Da -da -da -da. He's, he's going, look, I just told you I'm the, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. All right. Do you agree with this? Christ is our way to God. Thank God. See, that was... My God. We need to get somebody else running sound so I can have that man sitting right there. And get... Yeah! <clears throat> All right. So, Christ is the way to the Father. So that means that Jesus is our way and our truth and our life. Do you agree with that? Okay, that's good. Do you, so you agree that we go to the Father through him, right? Okay, just, just checking here. Um, but I want to qualify that reality. Because he's saying, I am the way to the Father, right? Christ crucified is our way to God. Think it through. Meditate on it. You can't get to, to the Father except through him, right? It is through the cross that you get to the Father. It is through his death that you... When Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man gets to the Father except by me, he is clearly saying to get to the Father, you're going to have to go through me who is the way, the truth, and the life, and I'm the crucified one. I get you there through the cross. We, I, think, I don't think many people at all think of the one who says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I don't think they're looking at Christ crucified. I don't think they think of him at all. I think that they, they're sort of looking about Jesus coming along, and we're standing there, and Jesus walks up, and he goes, hey, I'm going to take you to the Father. you know. And he takes us by the hand. He says, come on. Come on, come on, I'm going to lead you to the Father over here. And he brings you over there and says, Father, uh, I want you to meet so-and-so. Uh, they're in the family now, and, you know, da -da -da, I want you guys to get along now. Let's just, let's just get along now, okay? I, well, when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes to the Father, we're, that thought is closer to what we're thinking than the way is Christ crucified. The truth is Christ crucified. The life is the Lamb. Do you agree with me? Amen. Who is this King of glory? That's the question that keeps being asked. It's being asked here. Who is the Father? Who is the, How do we get to the way? I mean, the, all this stuff. There's all this confusion because it hasn't been brought down to the Isaiah 53 person is the barren one that God says rejoice you're going to bring forth more you know remember it says and who shall declare his generation they won't be around that's what it says in Isaiah 53 Isaiah 54 says make the, make the tabernacle bigger yes. Yes. And let the king of glory come in <laughs> give more room so then, so then we go, oh, that's really good Old Testament stuff. So we get to New Testament. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life to the Father. And we go, well, good. Take us to the Father. You know, doop do 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 And, and, and we, just, we don't see that, that it would be as if, you have to see that. It would be as if a slain lamb were standing there saying, I am the way. I am 
the truth. I am the life. You're not getting to the Father except by me. There's no way. It's, a, it's totally impossible for you to do that. All right, so the way to the Father, the truth of the Father, the life of the Father is Christ crucified. And I know that you're, you may not understand that, but Jesus' spirit of selflessness appears as a lamb in Jesus and as a dove in the Holy Spirit and as a father in the Father but it's all the same selfless giving. It is all exactly the same. But for us, it all required death. Yes. It, it required a death. A death had to, you know, and Jesus gave himself to fulfill that death, not just fulfill his role. See, that's it. That's what it is. We look at the, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life as Jesus as being a mediator, but we don't realize that the one who mediates this whole thing is a slain lamb. That's the deal. And so, you know, we're, we're confused about this stuff. All right. Um, I have a statement here. Jesus did not simply die as a lamb, but was raised to the throne as a mighty conqueror. Because, again, the book of Revelation is showing us he doesn't appear... Back to Revelation 5, <clears throat> you know, who is able to do this? Who is able to open these seals? The lion, someone says, the lion, the lion. It's the lion. The lion of the tribe of Judah can do it. Yay, let's look at him. Let's see who the king of glory hopes. Whoa. <laughs> This is it, you know, dude, that's, there's not, whoa, I mean, imagine if you're actually seeing it instead of reading the story, you go, that's the mighty one of God, that's him, exhibited for all and exalted for before all, exhibited here, you know, here's the, the father being the attorney. Here is exhibit A, slain lamb. And look, I exalted him before you all so that you would all see the king. Because he is on a throne. So he's king of glory. So that you would see the king exhibited and exalted. And so the, the Spirit of God, I mean, he's, he's hovering. Let, um, how much time do I got in this? Uh, hour? Hour, 10 minutes? Sure. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 6, and this will be my second closing with the hope of being the last close. All right, Second Chron uh, Corinthians, sorry, Second Corinthians chapter four, verse six. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shown, I'm sorry, is that the one I was thinking about here? Yeah. Um, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. He is wanting to reveal in Jesus the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. What is glorious to God? Who is the king of it? The king of all glory, the highest glory, the highest ability to glorify God. King of glory. 
Verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. All right, so here we go. Help me wrap it up, Holy Spirit, so that these people can go home and take a nap. <clears throat> All right, so open, so, so we're, we're going based on these scriptures now, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So open, let's open wide our gates and our everlasting doors and let's let the king of glory come into us. Okay, so we let Jesus come in and maybe that's part of the problem. We let Jesus come in because our concept of Jesus is Jesus of Nazareth, not slain lamb. Yeah. The out, the, him at the cross giving outward expression to his inmost nature, yes. Yes. which is just the opposite of what we think That's it right. is. That's metamorphosis. It's, the, it's that word. It's that same word for caterpillar becoming a butterfly. And as it were, at the cross, he was metamorphosed. He was seen for what he was on the inside, selfless, self-giving. Yes. Yes. He was metamorphosed. This butterfly doesn't look so pretty to most of us. We like the caterpillar that walked the earth three and a half years better. Oh, God. So let's let the king of glory come in and have that king of glory in our earthen vessel. Okay, we have to ask the question again every time, every time, because the scriptures do, chapter 24, or Psalm 24. Who is this treasure? Who is the treasure in our earthen vessel? We can call it Jesus. We can call it all kind of stuff. But the next bunch of verses spells it clearly out. Let's read it. Verse 8. We are troubled on every side, but not distressed. We are persecuted, but not in, or perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest. This isn't talking about someday in glory. This is talking about the life of Jesus made manifest in our bodies. Okay, it's not done. For we who live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. All right, so he's describing the king of glory. He's describing the treasure. Do you realize that that's what he's doing? I, mean, it's, I didn't skip a, one verse. It's context. Yeah. You know, we read... We have this treasure. We go, woo Greater is he that's in me. Okay, who is the king of glory that's in you? I mean, on and on and on. It's, there comes a time where after the death, we're going to have to recognize who the king of glory is in every situation. We're going to have to say, the one who brings me to God is the lamb. That he's the way. You are the way. We look, we're in the book of Revelation. We're not going, you know, I mean, they were perplexed. In the book of Revelation, they turned and looked to see the lion of the tribe of Judah, and they saw a little lamb as though it had been slain, and they were like, what? We're supposed to know when he says, I am the way, Christ crucified, you're the way. Christ crucified, you're the truth. Christ crucified, you're the life. You are the treasure so do we treasure the treasure in the way that God would have us treasure him? Did I use too many words? <laughs> no, I just used one word over and over. Do we treasure the treasure as God would have us to know who that treasure is? That treasure is not just Christ. I mean, it is, but it's not. It's not just Christ. It's that slain lamb, that little lamb, that selfless little lamb. Well, 
why is Christ in us? Well, we, we got that. We got that in um, uh, um, Isaiah 54. He, why is he in us? He's in us so that he can spread out. I and mean, that's our original scriptures, wasn't it? That how lovely are the, our tabernacles, my, how lovely are thy dwelling places, O Lord. So that he could spread out in us. So he could take every part. So he could fill, fill every part. In other words, he's not like a conqueror with a sword on the inside of us going, don't worry, I'll take the land. He's like the glory that filled the temple. He just, he, he spreads out. And everybody else just falls to the ground and can't minister anymore by reason of the king of glory. Glory to God. And, now, you know, we go, well, the ark, well, you know, how's that? <laughs> See, that's my third ending. <laughs> what? just in closing you know we talked about the the glory of God filling the temple and stopping all of the activity of godly people you know not the devil you know not not the bad things oh we need to stop the bad things stopping everything especially us and we say well where do, where's the lamb and all of that folks the ark of the covenant is also the mercy seat do you realize that and do you realize that the lid on the mercy seat where, where that lamb in the book of Revelation was sitting, the lid on that mercy seat is pure gold. Everything else is wood covered with gold. That mercy seat is solid gold. What does gold represent? Deity. And that seat doesn't mean anything unless there's blood on it, not to God. He doesn't accept anything unless there's blood on it. Is that right? A bloodied God. Blood on a gold. That's what it is. It's a bloodied God. Jesus is God. Did you forget that? And he came down here and God gave himself. And there it is. And when they brought into the temple... The ark that represented Jesus, represented God, but also represented a bloodied God, a lamb. And that's why in the book of Revelation, 
There's a lamb there now because that blood on that, on that gold represent the lamb. That's God who came and died for us. You say, you know, come boldly to the mercy seat. And I'm, this, I got to stop. But, we, but folks, I can show you in the New Testament where Christ is the mercy seat now. He is the mercy seat. So the, the throne that you're going to, you come boldly, but you come boldly to Jesus, to him as that mercy seat, to this bloodied God, this lamb on the throne. And that's why now in Revelation, when it's all wrapped up, that's what you see instead of just blood being placed there on, on gold. You see blood on gold, a slain lamb. That's what you see. And that's what, when that's brought in, when the king of glory is brought in, boom! See? And so we're not, like Cassie was just saying, we're not just trying to fix everything or figure everything out. You can, you know, the example the Lord gave me of that is like somebody having a, a huge ball of string, of, of yarn or something and you and they're all in pieces it's not just rolled up it's a million pieces and so you have to work your way through this down over here and then you know have you ever had to do that with cords or something where you got to work it through and then da, 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 and you put this part over here and then you're working it back through here you're trying to get it all straightened out so you pull out one thing out of there and you still got this ball of mess called us you know well we got this well, where's the king of glory and all that? Where's Jesus filling everything? That's Jesus fixing everything. The other way is to bring, the other way is first you need to know who the king of glory is. And then you need to start opening up and let him in. That's between you and God. It is my place as senior pastor to preach. <laughs> so I will do it faithfully. But I don't do it as one that has all the answers in that sense. I only know that the Lord is the only thing that's ever really made a difference in my life. And so, you know, my, my job is not to fix all of you. My job is not to fix all the problems here. I don't even, here's the difference between you and me. I don't care about all the problems here. I care about Jesus. I don't get ruffled over things that I see that are, if Jesus doesn't change it, I don't want it changed. That's from worship leaders to other preachers to, to sound to music to, to children's areas to, you know. ah! Well, you're just a man that just doesn't care. You know, what kind of pastor are you? You don't care. Oh, I care. I care about Jesus, and I want it to be Jesus, and I don't care about anything that's not going to, that'll form up into perfection and not be Jesus. Well, it, thank God we fix this. But where's Jesus in it? I can't stand it personally. I can't stand the beauty of man. I can't. And the, the glory of the Tower of Babel makes me sick. I just want Christ so formed that if it gets worse and it's Christ, I love it. Oh, I know. I'm insane. You know, I'm at an age now where you can just think that and still let me go on. You know what I mean? He's just, he's just old. He's just, <laughs> he's crazy. And, you know. So let's just do what we're doing. And, <laughs> and pretty soon he'll get Alzheimer's. He won't even remember our name, much less the. All right, we need to stop. God help us. Thank you, Cassie. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather you pray. Get up here, girlfriend. Right. The 
the breakthrough. Yeah. I said, oh God, I think we missed it. We really missed it. Let's not have a breakthrough. Let's really not have a breakthrough. But if we miss your eternal purpose, your heart, and your ultimate will, that is more than anything you could ever, ever design this life. If that's all we got is to be Jesus Christ and us revealed. The incarnate nation is important because without the incarnation, there would be no resurrection. And it's like, but all along the way, there's so much more. It's like, I don't want to know each detail. I just don't want to know you. That's right. And then when you see it's all about Jesus. I mean, it's so simple and yet so profound. It's like, but Lord, don't let us get so caught up in it. And then there's just see the, the forest, and you see the trees without the forest. We need Jesus. And that's like, that's why I began to pray. I knew it was the Holy Spirit at birth me. I was groaning saying, I, I want us to have Christ formed in us, not just a breakthrough. Right. And so it's right on, and Cassie asked me for prayer. And just, that, I feel like the Holy Spirit right now is really birthing this. It's really growing, saying, come on. Yeah. Christ, let Christ come forth. You got, know? what, a month and a half? <laughs> To get the focus off of prayer for it on to Jesus. Anybody who wants prayer for this, if not, I'll just pray. Um, you know, I'm so with Randy. You know, I don't want just to fix things. I don't. You know, because you can have a perfect environment, a perfect thing, but it's not life. It's not Jesus. That's it's right. not the Lord. And then I don't want that. I don't want that. I just I want Jesus and mm -hmm. Jesus. The lamb seated on the throne, the lamb that, that laid down his life, yes, is the one that feels everything yes. all in and all. So I just want to say amen and just, yes, and I want Jesus. Yes. Whoever wants prayer just for opening your heart, opening your to the king to come in, the king of glory, not the fix it king, but just the king of glory to rest and fill. That's all, it's just a faith prayer. It's not a, I've got it together. So anybody who wants to just pray with me along those lines, come on up and we'll join together in faith. In faith. Come in faith. That's where you come, believing that his presence is able to fill. That his power and his greatness is greater than our faults and our needs and little things. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just come before you. I thank you for those who have come forth in prayer. They've come boldly, Lord Jesus. We come and we stand together, not because we have it together, but because we want to be together with you, because we want to be filled with you. And we know, Lord Jesus, that if we lift up our heads, if we open our hearts and our minds, and we open to you, Lord, that you will be faithful to come in and fill, Lord Jesus. We're tired of trying to just get you in our little cubby holes, in our little areas areas that need your attention we want your presence and your glory to take over to rest on the temple lord that we would be as priests who are ministering day and night to you because we're so filled with you lord going up the mountain to get to you is not always easy but lord i trust that if we climb that mountain even as moses did that you will show up you will appear you will show yourself because of your greatness and your faithfulness Lord, help us not to be overwhelmed by the mountain that we're climbing, but instead to just go, yes, I'm opening them up. I'm opening up. I'm opening up because I want you. I want your presence. I want to be filled with you. I want to be changed. I don't want to be the same. I don't want to stay in this place. Lord, we lift up our heads and we pray in faith, not because we have the ability to change or do something different, but because we have the, the faith to believe in you. We believe your word, and we say, Lord, do what we cannot do. Do what we cannot do. We release our faith for you, Jesus. May the blood of the Lamb and the mercy seat be the place that we meet each other and we meet you face to face. Lord, sprinkle the blood. Allow us to come because of your work, of your cross. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that we can even believe we have a hope when there is no hope. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I just pray for areas or those who have hurts, people who 
have hurts deep within where they can't trust others or they can't get past certain things, I pray that your presence would rest upon those things and that the balm of Gilead begin to fill those hurtful places, those things, the, the recesses, things that have abscessed and, and are not healthy because of the hurts, Lord. I pray that your presence, your balm of Gilead would fill those areas so that they can be with you, Lord Jesus. Those who wrestle with their mind, Lord, I pray for their minds, that when their minds wander, the other things come. I pray again that your presence would fill, that they would be able to look to you and trust that you will fill, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you care, that you do see the issues, but your answer for every issue is Christ and not just fixing things. Thank you, Lord, for Christ. Thank you, Father, for Christ. Thank you for the Lamb. Thank you for the Lamb that was slain. Thank you that we can be with you. Thank you that you are with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin to release your faith right now. Tell him that you want to open up your gates. Declare to him what your heart for him to receive his word. Declare to him what he is and not what you are. Declare the truth as it is in Jesus to him. Lift up your voice. Lift up your gates to him. Thank you, Jesus. We trust you, Lord. We declare your reality against our reality. Our reality is lies. We, re we trust you, Jesus. We lift up our voices. We lift up our hearts in the midst of hardness, in the midst of contrary things. Lord, we trust you. We want you. We want you, we want you, we press into you. May we seek and hunger for you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. King of glory, come in. King of glory, come in. King of glory, come in. In the name of Jesus, King of glory, come in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you.